Okay, so what can we do about this? And what are we doing about this? First of all, I think it's helpful to reshape the debate about corruption. Completely transform it. Transparency International, to their great credit, have agreed that our index complements their index um, and, and tells a very important story. Um, and we'd like that index now to become the global tool when we start talking about corruption and the supply chain of corruption. The Norwegian government, bless them, are now adopting this into their, uh, their own list of places they will sanction and not invest in. I would encourage others to do the same, but also credit rating agencies and so on are now beginning to use this index as part of their political risk management tool. Secondly, and this is what we've been discussing in Canberra, we'd like to move up towards a global multilateral framework for tackling tax evasion through automatic information exchange with sanctions against the non-cooperating jurisdictions. Um, Multilateral, because if we continue to try to work on a bilateral basis, we need 26,000 or so bilateral treaties. And the bilateral treaties which have been pushed by the OECD since G20 came up with this agenda uh, two years ago, the bilateral treaties are based upon a system of on-request information exchange. Now I'll explain what these two, the difference between the two. On-request means I open a bank account in a tax haven a co uh, country, and it Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs somehow managed to find wind of the fact that I have that bank account, they can then present a dossier to the courts in that, in that uh, tax haven. Um, and the dossier has to be quite a detailed one, not just my name and address, but also the bank branch with supporting evidence. And if the courts of the tax haven are deemed to support, then they might share information. Now, uh, you know, You don't need to be that cynical to recognize that this is not the most effective tool for deterring tax evasion. And don't take my word for it. The French finance minister last week said it's not working for us. Automatic information exchange works on a very different basis. It's a deterrent tool. Um, I open a bank account in another, another jurisdiction, and the bank automatically has to tell the tax authorities of that jurisdiction, which automatically has to, under treaty provisions, tell Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. No rain, wasn't it? This is the system used by the Australians, by the Europeans, automatically, and by the United States. They're denying it to developing countries. And that their arguments for denying it are, are extraordinary. Argument number one, you don't have the capacity to absorb this information, which when you unbundle that one, implicitly agree, say it's quite a hell of a lot of information we've got to share with you guys for recognizing the scale of the problem. But it's also it's rather patronizing. And, and I hope you'll agree with that. And, and anyway, um, for those of you who do visit developing countries regularly, as I do, um, when you go to any developing country um, and arrive at the border, they take your passport and swipe it. Uh, that swiping links their computers automatically to Interpol's central computers. So they have your criminal records. They have Interpol records there. That's called automatic information exchange. That was introduced by George Bush, funded by USAID, in order to tackle terrorist finance and terrorist movements. If you can do it in that, for that agenda, I'm sure you can do it for tax, to counter tax evasion. So, sorry, I don't buy the argument. The other arguments being put above all by OECD officials to us, and we're engaged in one hell of a war with them, is, oh, uh, well, um, I can understand why NGOs want to have this information. They say we totally agree, automatic information exchange is a much better thing, but no developing country has so far asked for it. Ha, ha, ha. When Prime Minister Singh turned up at Cannes three weeks ago, the first thing he said was, we demand automatic information exchange. So that argument no longer applies. Second thing we're pushing for is an international financial reporting standard of what's called country by country reporting. This has already been taken up by Publish What You Pay. It's been pushed through Dodd Frank. Um, this would require companies to unbundle their consolidated accounts and produce accounts for every subsidiary in every country where they operate. 
which means you can then start the process of linking the tax accounts that are provided to the national tax authorities to the country accounts, rather than trying to, through some impossible process, trying to reconcile the tax accounts at national level to global accounts or the segment accounts at regional level, which is an impossible task. This financial reporting standard would help us to understand what the companies are doing in the countries where they're engaged. It would also understand, help us to understand the identity of who's behind this country. And this is the head on anti corruption thing. This is, again, we tackle the tax haven head on, requiring full public disclosure of who are the ultimate beneficial owners. I should have added ultimate, because there's a new, a new jargon emerging here. Beneficial ownership of offshore trusts and companies, you'll often find when you go to British Virgin Islands to find out who's actually behind this illegal logging company. Um, you'll find that the who behind that illegal company is in fact an offshore trust in the Bahamas or in Luxembourg or somewhere. And that's the beneficial ownership. What we're demanding is what's called the ultimate beneficial owner, the warm-blooded person. And the Financial Action Task Force, which is the global body charged with um, tackling anti money laundering, attacking money laundering, is now totally on board and is pushing for exactly this standard. That's in their current review process. These three demands, all of which are being pushed at one level or another by either through G20 or Financial Action Task Force, would pretty much close down most tax havens. We don't need to call them a close down the tax haven, just do this and most of them are out of business. That's where they make their money. And whilst we're about it, let's close down the laws. You in Australia already have a general anti-avoidance principle or provision. We don't in Britain. We're campaigning for it. The current government is moving towards having one. Let's close down this idea that it's okay for lawyers and accountants to conspire against the public <coughs> by supporting tax evasion and tax avoidance. Um, okay. This is something we're pushing through the United Nations Committee. Try to ensure that national tax systems are not engaged in war, economic warfare against other national tax. In other words, the process of beggar their neighbor by offering tax incentives to book your profits in Jersey rather than in Zambia where they're actually made. Treat tax evasion as a corrupt activity, which it is. It involves a lot of players in very profitable activity, undermining the public. Um, and negotiate new frameworks to tax multinational companies, not on the basis of the legal structures they set up in tax havens, but on the economic substance of their activities. This is what already applies at state level in the United States. 